For racial level data, the shape of the histogram can tell us both what sort of analysis we can perform on the data and may tell us something about the underlying nature of the data. The shape of racial level histograms can be, for example, what's known as a uniform shape. In the uniform shape, each interval has an equal number of data values in it. This is the first column, column A, arranged into 10 classes. Column A contains the numbers 0 to 9 repeated 10 times. So there are 10 zeros, 10 ones, 10 twos. You'll see there are 10 columns and each column contains 10 values. The intervals run from 0 to 0 0.95, 0 0.95 to 1.9. These intervals each contain 10 values. So the histogram has a flat top, a uniform top. This is called a uniform distribution. It's mathematically uniform, 10 values in each class. In this particular case, there are 10 classes. Another shape that is often seen is the centrally peaked, roughly symmetric shape seen here. The centrally peaked, roughly symmetric has a hill-like shape or mountain shape, sometimes a shape of an old-fashioned bell. The most frequently occurring value in this particular data set is 4.2 to 4.5. There's about 25 data values between 4.2 and 4.5. Data values below 4.2 are less frequently occurring and data values above 4.5 are less frequently occurring, thus resulting in this mountain shape. You can see those values in column C. This spreadsheet will be uh, linked below so that you can look at the values if you wish. Another shape that we'll sometimes see is a bimodal shape. Bimodal means there are two peaks, two modes, literally. And this particular data set here is bimodal. This is in over here in column E. Column E has a bimodal shape. There's a peak between 2 and 3 and another peak between 8 and 9. Essentially, it looks like two centrally peak distributions, and sometimes this is an indication that you have two different populations in your sample, that there's two different uh population groups in your sample, but it's a bimodal distribution. There, in theory, there's trimodal, but sometimes variation in the tops is simply random. Earlier, in another video, we encountered the leaflet length. The leaflet length, this one doesn't automatically drop into the histogram chart, so I'll tell it that I want a histogram chart. I'll go ahead and turn off the legend and just for consistency I'll go ahead and set the color as I did in an earlier video. This is the uh, leaflet length distribution. The uh, histogram runs from 5 to 12.5 and you'll see that most of the data values, 11 of them, are between 11 and 12.5. There are less or fewer data values below 11. The peak is on the right side between 11 and 12.5. There is no data, though, above 12.5. So it looks like the peak is pushed over to the right. The smaller values on the left are referred to as the tail of the distribution. This distribution has one tail on the left. The distribution earlier, the histogram of the centrally peaked data, effectively has two tails, one on the left and one on the right. So the leaflet length data 
has a tail and a left. When a distribution has a tail that is more prominent on one side of the distribution, the distribution is said to be skewed. The shape is a skewed shape. The center is pushed off to one side, essentially. For statisticians, the direction of the skew is where the tail is relative to the center. Here the tail is on the left, so this distribution is skewed left. It's a left skewed distribution. Data that tends to randomly vary, like marble masses. All the marbles are a slightly different mass. Data such as the marble mass data is actually, roughly speaking, a centrally peaked distribution. Roughly speaking, it's centrally peaked. So there we see a centrally peaked distribution for the marble masses. There may be a small amount of skew, but in this case that will probably be random. That distribution would be called, roughly speaking, symmetric and centrally peaked. The way that Google Sheets in the app and on the desktop calculates the number of intervals to use, the number of classes, is by taking the square root of the sample size and then rounding that off. In columns A, C, and E, that data had 100 data values, the square root of which is 10, which is why those three distributions have 10 classes. In column G, the leaflet data, there are 24 leaflets. The square root is, rounds off to five. It's a little less than five and it rounds up to five. So Google Sheets has picked five uh, classes, five intervals, five columns. And the marble mass data too, it is, is selected based on the, uh, about being about 36 data values. It's chosen to use six data columns for that. So Google Sheets uses the square root of the number of data values as the number of classes. And in the app, we cannot change that. In the app, we do not have access to the width of the buckets, the minimum or the maximum. From the desktop, that can be changed. <clears throat> From the desktop, one can specify a width, as is done here. This width is specified at 1. The Google Sheets pick 0.95. Here it's been manually adjusted to 1, with a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10. That can be done from the desktop, and that will be linked in another video, how that could be done on the desktop. <clears throat> but from the app, that, those changes cannot be made. That said, the app is making a relatively reasonable choice for the number of classes uh, uh, that based on the number of data values. The square root of the number of data values is a fairly standard approach to calculating the appropriate number of classes. The app has one other more serious limitation. The app can only produce a histogram of 100 data values or less. If there are more than 100 data values, the histogram chart option does not appear. If there are more than 100 data values, the option to make a histogram is not available. That's a very serious limitation from a statistics standpoint. However, for the purposes of learning about histograms, data shapes, uh, learning about statistics itself, the mechanics and concepts, that limitation is not as serious. The ideas of statistics can be demonstrated with a hundred or fewer data values, at least the ideas and concepts in a introduction to basic statistics course can certainly be demonstrated in a hundred values or less. And below a hundred values, the square root rule is a good rule to use. That rule tends to break down when you have much larger data sets. And there are other guidelines that perform better for large data sets. But under a hundred, the square root rule is a functional rule. This limitation only exists in the Google Sheets app, the Android app. 
this limitation does not apply to the desktop version of the program. On the desktop, there is uh, no functional limit to the number of data values that can be uh, included in a histogram. So this is simply a limitation in the app. However, as this course focuses on learning statistics by using the app, this course will stick to data sets that have 100 or fewer data values. So the shapes again are uniform, a centrally peaked, roughly symmetric, bimodal, or skewed distribution. This happens to be left skewed. Distributions can also be right skewed. And of course, there are possibilities of sort of combinations of things in between these different shapes. So histograms tell us something about the data. They tell one what sort of analysis might be appropriate. Calculating the mean for a bimodal distribution gives you a value in the middle of this where there's very few data values. Calculating the mean may not be the most useful piece of information, and some more advanced statistical analyses will not be able to be done on bimodal data. That data is not considered uh, what we'll later learn to call normally distributed. So the shape will be important as a way of learning what operations we might be able to do on that data later.